Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here before you today. I'm just gonna let you know right up front that I have a brief word for you today, but it's going to be an on time one. It's going to be one that is from the throne room of God. And I'm talking about, it's directly from the heart of God uh, through me and to your ears. And so for everyone who's here, I want you to know that you are not listening to this by accident. There's something that the Lord wants to get to you. There's something that he wants to literally get into your hand. And there's a reason for that. The reason is because there are things that you should be doing already. There's a place in life that you should be at already. There are things that you should have already. There are people that you should be connected to already. There's a certain level that you should be at in the earth already. Why is that? Because God has things for you that aligns with the unfolding of his kingdom agenda within the earth. You are the Lord's, you are God's exclusive meaning you are the bride of Christ. This means that he has things for you to do to bring him glory. He's coming back for a glorious church, a glorious bride. That's without spot or wrinkle. That means that there are things that the Lord has for you that will establish you and embellish you and equip you so that you give glory to his name. He does it for his name's sake. He does it for his namesake. And I have done many messages on that, but today I come with a brief word, but it's a quick one, but it is for sure a word from the Lord. So I want you to know um, that I was sitting in bed last night. And I was sitting up in bed last night. And as I was sitting in bed last night, I heard God say, and I wrote it down. I have, I don't even have that many notes, but I'm gonna be reading to you what I wrote down last night. I heard God say, that he wants you to be a blessing to someone else. Not only did I hear God say that, I also heard him say that the church is on its way to becoming the wealthiest institution in the earth. And I know that many of you may be thinking, well, why use that word institution? I actually asked God the same thing. I said, Lord, institution, we're the bride of Christ, we're the church. We are, of course, we're not a building, right? We're a people, but then also there's, there, there's physical church buildings where you want your people to be able to go to. There's ministries where you want your people to be able to go to so that they can receive healing, so that they can receive the word of the Lord, so that they can be in the atmosphere when there's a move of the spirit flowing in that place. You want that for your children. So I said, Lord, why use institution? That's an educational term. And God said, correct. God said, correct, because the church is the educational institution within the church that's been put in place by God, put in place by God, so that when people in the world come in contact with you, who are, who are a part of the body of Christ, you are a part of God's exclusia, you are a part of the church of the Lord, they get an encounter with God and they change, why? Because they get knowledge, they get revelation, they get understanding and they get wisdom. That is them being re-educated. That is them being transformed by the renewing of their mind when they get an encounter with you. Why? Because when people come in contact with you, they're coming in contact with the God within you. That means God is living within you. No, you're not God. That's not what I'm saying. You're not God. We're going to pray in a brief moment and then I'm going to get into this word that the Lord wants me to share with you. No, you're not God, but God does live within you. The spirit of God lives within you. And believe it or not, not everyone has the spirit of God living within them. And so when people come in contact with you, do you know that sometimes you are the only encounter they have with God within a week, within a month, within a year? Do you see how the church is the educational institution within the earth? And so I heard God say, not only that, the church is on its way to becoming the wealthiest institution in the earth. And so I wanna talk about that today. I wanna to share with you what's on the heart of God um, about that today concerning your life and some things that he wants to share with you. And first I wanna pray. God, you're so faithful, you're so good to us. You always come with an on-time word. I didn't even, you know, Lord, you know that I wasn't even gonna release a word today, Lord. I was tired, I have things going on in my personal life. I have things going on behind the scenes that no one knows about, Lord. You know that I was gonna go to you, Lord, and say, God, I just want you 
take time and, and recline back and do things in the background today, but you arrested me in my spirit today, God. And you said, no, you must share this because it's on time, it's in season, and it's time sensitive. It is time sensitive. This is a time sensitive word, and I thank you for the releasing of it, God. I thank you for sending people. I thank you for calling people from the north, east, south, and west to come hear the word of the Lord today. I thank you for using me, God, as I don't take it lightly, Lord. Whenever you call, I say, yes, sir, I am here and I am ready to say what thus say of the Lord. Wherever you say go, I say, yes, sir, I am here and I'm ready to do and go wherever you say, God. Let that same readiness and obedience be on those who are listening today so that when they hear the word of the Lord, when they get an instruction from God, when you say go to this place, when you say go to that person and say that, they obey no matter what it takes. I thank you, Lord, for giving them a spirit of obedience, a spirit of obedience. I see it now in the name of Jesus. I'm so thankful for it, God. I'm thankful that you ready and equip your people so that they stand at attention and obey the word of the Lord. You're so faithful to us, God. You're so merciful to us, God. You give us favor, God. You're so graceful to us, God. And we thank you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way today. Have your way in their life. Have your way in their body. Have your way in their finances. Have your way in their relationships, their marriages, their families. Have your way today, God. Let things shift in the realm of the spirit. Things that have been coming up against them for a long time. Let things shift in their life. Things that have been uh, contending with them putting up a resistance against them for a long time. Be removed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm gonna tell you just by that prayer alone, many of you are gonna see some things shift. Many of you are gonna see some things shift in your life and it's gonna to happen today. It's going to happen today. And for those of you, and I know I, I just heard the word of the Lord, there are some of you who are just simply not gonna believe it. There are some of you who are going to say, well, I hope so. And I'm just gonna be real with you, that's not faith. That is not faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith pleases God. And so for those of you who heard that prayer, you came into agreement with it, you received it for yourself, know that you will see something shift in your life and it will happen today. It will happen today. And I look forward to your testimony. I look forward to your testimony. I give all glory to God. I give all glory to God. And so as I was sharing with you and it was as I was lifting up to the Lord, how... I wasn't even going to release a word today. I have so many things going on behind the scenes where, and I'm just going to be very vulnerable with you. I'm going to be very transparent with you because I have to be real with you because you, those of you who the Lord is called to a certain assignment, who is called to a certain task to do a certain thing, sometimes it's going to take a sacrifice on your part. Sometimes that means you're going to have to sacrifice sleep. Sometimes that means you're going to have to sacrifice um physical things, right? Your time, your energy. And so for those of you who are wondering, yes, there are times, days recently where I haven't been getting much sleep. I've been going through the Lord. I've been doing things in my, and, you know, behind the scenes for the ministry, right? For things that we are building, for things that the Lord has called us to do, for, for things that the Lord is calling me to do in my personal life. Across the board, the Lord is doing an incredible thing and you will see, you will see. You will see, and I'm telling you, one of the key indicators that the Lord is doing incredible things with this ministry and with myself as a minister, and I don't like talking about myself, but I need you to know, one of the, one of the most incredible, beautiful indicators is that those who are under this ministry begin to see it happen for them. We've been getting incredible testimonies. What God does for this ministry and what God does in my life, because you have obeyed the voice of the Lord and you've connected yourself to this ministry and you have sat yourself under this ministry, you will see it happen for you too. And we've been getting testimonies, incredible record number of testimonies of people receiving new jobs, people starting new businesses and then being successful, people getting new business ideas and then now they're ready to hit the ground running right? People moving into their new place of residence, keys, like we're still getting testimonies about keys, gold keys, gold keys, houses the Lord is giving his people, apartments the Lord is giving his people, cars the Lord is giving his people, financial miracles the Lord is giving his people, and God will do it for you. God will do it for you. I want you to expect it. I want you to expect it and actually look for it actually look for it and actually for those of you who are here and you received it for yourself and you're expecting it and you're going to be looking for it begin to give god thanks now that's a that's a demonstration and display of your faith begin to give god thanks now 
Okay, so I want to get into what the Lord wanted to share with you today. And so um, this is also what I wrote down last night. The Lord said he'll call you to bless someone in the middle of your mess. He'll call you to bless someone in the middle of your mess. Why is this? Why is that? Because he's trying to make an impartation to you. Some of you need to write that down. There are many things that you've been going to the Lord and praying about. There are many things that you have maybe not prayed about, but it's just been a silent prayer of your heart, right? It's just been a silent um, desire of your heart. But God knows because he knows the hearts of man, right? He listens to the thoughts. He hears a thought as clearly as a word that comes out of your mouth. I need you to know that. That when, you know, you say a word, right, and someone next to you hears it very clearly, God hears your thoughts that clearly. And so you may not have said a word, but God heard your thought. He heard your thought con concerning that issue that's troubling you, right? That issue that is keeping you up at night, that issue that's causing you anxiety, that issue that is sending you into a depression. God heard the desire of your heart and he heard your thoughts. And I'm telling you that God wants to make an impartation to you, but that comes through you blessing someone in the middle of your mess. And it's because I want you to hear me very clearly. God doesn't want you to just be someone that's constantly sitting down, reaching for the hand of God, not ever learning the heart of God. Because when you know the heart of God, then you become in the likeness of God and you have a character as, as God has, has in his character. And you see people the way God sees them. And now you shift from a person who's not just begging and pleading and contending for God to give you a blessing, but you become someone who's a vessel that God is able to now flow blessings through. You become someone who's now a vessel where God is able to now flow blessings through. And so not only are you being blessed by God because you're favored by God, right? But now God can bless you in such a way to where you have overflow and he can use you to bless others. You become the vessel that God uses to bless others through. And now you understand. Now you understand what it means when the Lord tells us it's better to give than it is to receive. It's better to give than it is to receive. Because when you give and you, you're in a position of being a giver, it's a higher road, it's a higher place, it's a higher way of living and existing. It is who God calls you to be. When you live as someone who blessed others, then you immediately become blessed. Because I want you to see this, when God tells you that you are to bless someone and you obey and you do it, and he saw that you obeyed, and he saw that you did it, and he knows the posture of your heart behind it, meaning you just did it because you just genuinely want to. He says, now I have somebody. Now I have somebody where when I say go, that person needs help, you will do it. When I And he'll give you, he'll fund it, he'll, he'll give you the resources to do it. I just heard an incredible testimony. And I just heard an incredible testimony yesterday of God blessing this woman with tons of resources because she had a heart just to give it. She had a heart just to do it. She had a heart for God's people, to help God's people. Do you know God will do that for you? And so I'm telling you that God will cause you to bless someone in the middle of your mess. You're saying, Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. And he says, okay, we'll give that. Give that. You know, there is another testimony. I want you to stick with me here because I'm telling you how to reach your breakthrough. I'm telling you how to receive that which you have been praying for. I'm telling you that this is a message into your ears, into your mind. I know it's penetrating for many of you straight from the heart of God, straight from the throne room of God, because there's something he's trying to get to you. There was a woman who commented on one of our videos, and I remembered that. I remember this comment um, in great detail. And this is a small scale, but it's happened on a larger scale with me personally. She said she prayed to God for a new purse. She just needed a new purse. And I know it's simple, but this is another point that I want you to take notice of. Doesn't matter how small it is. Doesn't matter how large it is. God wants to give you that which you prayed for if it's in alignment with anything in his word. And so she needed a new purse. And she said, Lord, I she had her eyes set on one. She said, Lord, I really want that purse. And so God asked her to give up the purse that she had. She found a woman who didn't have a purse and she's 
gave it to her. That same day, she came in contact with two gentlemen who gifted her the money to get the purse that she had her eyes set on. I'm telling you that when you go to God and you pray for something, God says, give that, give something. And then you'll find that he meets your need and the exact thing that you pray for. Why? Because you first gave. Because you first gave. Now Luke 6.38 makes all sense. Makes all the more sense. You give and it should be given to you with good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. Do you know why some people never receive at the level that God wants them to receive? Because they're skeptical of the word of God. They hear someone say that and they say they just want money. They just want money. No, they're trying to tell you how to receive the blessing of God that you've been praying for. It's in the word of God. It's in the word of God. And I'm telling you that that's, that's a blinder. It's, a, it's spiritual blindness. And I would say it's ultimate, it's demonic. It's the devil that's pulled the wool over that person's eyes because he knows that if they really catch hold of that revelation, there will be nothing that is held back from them. There will be nothing that the Lord won't give them. Why is that? Because he's now seen that you are a person who has a heart of a giver. And so God will call you to bless someone in the middle of your mess because he's trying to make an impartation to you. He's trying to make an impartation to you. I want to share something with you that God had um, shared with me yesterday. Man, I wish I had, let me see if I can find it. I wanna see if I can find it because I saved it. Give me a brief moment. Give me a very brief moment. I'm gonna see if I can find it because I wrote it down and I know I'm going to be obedient. I know I heard the Lord say, you must share that with them. You must share that with them. Because I know that some of you, the Lord's going to lead to this message. And if this word is for you. This word is for you. And as I share it with you, you're going to know it's for you. So give me a, a brief moment. Okay. All right. So take this if this is your word. I heard God say, now here's the thing. When I heard God say this last night, he was speaking to me concerning a very specific person. But then as I was writing out earlier today, what the Lord wanted me to share with you in more detail, I heard the Lord say, share that with them, share that with them too. How do I know that some of you are gonna be here that this word is for? Because I heard the Lord say, share that with them. This means that some of you are gonna be here He's going to order your steps here where this is your word. I heard God say, they cannot receive because they lack faith. They judge, they equalize. That means that you bring you you want to bring people down to your level knowing that knowing that God is a God of order. There's order in the church. There's order in the body of Christ. Not everyone is on your level. Not everyone is your equal. That's a whole message within itself. They cannot receive because they lack faith. They judge, they equalize, speak ill of, and doubt my anointing manifesting itself in others. The very people I send to impart to them that which they pray for. And so I want to share with you what that means because I, I believe that many of you need a little, more, a little bit more context. God can send someone into your life. Let's say you, you pray for something, right? God then sends an answer to that prayer. He sends someone into your life. He sends a messenger like myself. He sends, he sends your pastor. He sends a perfect stranger on the street. You've never met this person a day in your life. You don't know them and they impart to you. God sent them their divine connection. God sent them to pour into you, to give you wisdom, to tell you a divine uh, instruction, to give you an assignment, to say, God told me to share this message with, with you, right? It's a, it's a word from the Lord. He sent that person into your life to impart to you. How do you know that they were sent by God to, for the specific purposes of imparting to you? I'm going to slow down because I feel the anointing of God and I get very passionate and, and uh, wild up when I feel the anointing. How do you know that this person was sent by God to impart to you? Because they have, they are on another level than you. They have more wisdom than you. They have more life experiences than you. They have achieved more than you have, have achieved by the hand of God. That's how you know that this person was sent by God to impart into me. It's very important. God will never send someone to impart into you who is not going where you're going, who have not been where you are going. That's very crucial for many of you here because some of you are taking advice from people 
who are not going where you're going, who have not been where you're going. And so it's the blind leading the blind. But you know that person was sent by God for the purposes of imparting something to you because they have been where you have been and they're speaking from experience. They're speaking from a place of wisdom. That's a person that you need to zip it and receive. You're not on the same level as them. You're not on the same level as them. But then I also heard God say, and I want you to, I want to read it to you again because I want you to begin to grasp this. This is the biggest hindrance for many of you. I heard God say they can't receive because they lack faith. They judge, they equalize, speak ill of, and doubt my anointing manifesting itself in others. The very people I send to impart to them that which they pray for. And so I'm telling you that God will cause you, he'll call you too, to Bless someone in the middle of your mess for the purposes of making an impartation to you, right? How, when a person like that comes into your life, you say, how can I honor you? What do you need? How can I help you? How can I, how can I honor you, man of God? How can I honor you, woman of God? You, you never want to be in a position where you're just someone constantly saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And oh, I, you know, I'm just, this means so much to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a person who's a taker. It's better to give than to receive. Because when you're a giver, God gives seed to the sower. You constantly will have something in your hand to give. You constantly will be an overflow. God trusts you with more. So after I heard God say that, then I heard God say, that is all my, that is all my daughter. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll get on and share this with your people. And so God wants to know that he can call on you to use you to flow blessings through. People say all the time, well, if, if God is going to help me or God is going to help them, then he'll just bless them. How do you think that happens? Do you think that he makes money appear out of thin air? Yes, absolutely. He can do that. He is God. There's nothing impossible for God. But when God wants to bless someone, he does it through people. It works the same way on the flip side. When the devil wants to destroy someone, he'll do it through people who send a person into your life. And so when God wants to bless you, it's oftentimes going to be done through a person. And so God wants to know that you can be that person, that you're not constantly on the receiving end of that, where people are being that person for you. He wants to make you that person. But first, you must become a person who gives, right? Who blesses someone in the middle of your mess. That is the way out. And here's the thing, to the carnal mind, that doesn't make sense. And this is why it goes over most people's head. To the carnal mind, to the flesh, it doesn't make sense. Kingdom principles don't make sense to the natural mind. It's a kingdom principle. It's, it's otherworldly. And so, of course, it doesn't make sense. The world will say, why give to someone when you need? You should just keep it for yourself. Well, that's selfish. That's not of God. And so the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom don't make sense to the natural mind. That is why you need faith. That is why you need faith. That is why you live by faith. Because it's going to take faith. Otherwise, it would not make sense. And so God wants to know he can call on you to use you to flow blessings through you to other people. And so sometimes he'll send you a test. He'll say, give that woman this. Give that man that. Sow into this person. Do that for this person. And then he'll watch. He'll listen to your thoughts. He'll search your heart around the matter. He'll even see how long it took you to actually obey. He'll see if you even obeyed at all. And that determines, that determines the different levels where people end up in life. It's, it gets really deep. And I'm going to have to teach an entire message on this. I will. I will. I just heard the Lord. I will. That determines the different levels that people end up in life. And they may look at somebody and say, why do they have that? Why do they have that? Why do they have this? And I'm going to tell you, it's the posture of a person's heart. And there are many tests that God will do on people to see, huh, I told them to give that. Did they do it? Did they hesitate? How long did they procrastinate on it? Did they, um, did they rearrange what I told them to give, right? If I told them to give them their entire wardrobe, old clothes they don't even wear anymore, and I'll give them new clothes because that, that clearly they need new clothes. Did they hesitate? Did they decide, I'm just going to give them one or two items, not the whole thing? God looks at that. He searches the thoughts. He listens to the thoughts of a person, sees how long they procrastinate. And that determines where people end up in life. How The level at which they obey, their level of obedience, how quick they obey, right? 
that determines it all. And so this would mean that you no longer be the person that is constantly asking God for blessing, constantly asking God to meet your need. You, you're giving, and so all of your needs are met according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. When you become a giver, all of your needs are met. Many people quote that scripture, Philippians uh, 4, 19, but I want you to read it for yourself and go up a few verses to Philippians 4, 15 through 19, where Paul is talking to the church of Philippi and saying, listen, I have acts. No other church wanted to partner with me and giving and receiving, but because you did, because you partnered with me, God, God will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so do you see what happened before? They helped, they gave, and because they gave, Paul said, I know, I know God is gonna meet every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That is how it works. And that is how we can get people who say that scripture for years and never receive at the level God wants them to receive. I'm telling you how to receive that which you have been praying for. And so now you begin to understand how it's better to give than it is to receive. I want to take you somewhere and then um, I'll pray for you and close out. Because I believe that after I read this to you, I've said all that God has given me to say to you today. And I believe he's going to lead the right people here. Okay, let's come with me to Job. Job, I want you to see something here. Because many people talk about Job, love the book of Job. Um, there's a lot to learn from his life. Job 42.10. Job 42.10. There's a lot to learn from his life. But many people will say things like, I'm in a Job season. And you may be. You may be. But I want you to, if you are in a Job season, pay attention. Because this is going to be uh, especially for you. So I mean, especially for you. Um, many people say, I'm in a Job season. But what they don't realize is, what broke Job out of that season? What caused him to be blessed with double? Okay, Job 42.10. Listen to this. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Listen to this. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. We can see this many times throughout scripture. We can actually see this with Abraham. You can see, see, see this with Abraham on how I believe he prayed for Abimelech. And then now Sarah gets pregnant. Yes, the promise was made, but it breaks through. He sees it happen in his life when he prays for Abimelech. Now listen to what's going on with Job. Job has a season where he loses everything and it's continuing. He does not know when it's going to end, but then... He finds it in his heart. Do you see what I mean? It's the posture of your heart. He finds it in his heart to say a prayer during his own time of need. He needs God to break the blessing of God over his life, right? He needs God to come through and, and, and lift him up out of this dark season, right? This long, dark season. I believe it was eight months. Eight months is a long time. A very long time. And so... In his dark season, where he is in deep need, he finds it in his heart to pray for his friends. He finds it in his heart to pray a prayer to the Lord for his friends. And then it's after that prayer. It says, when he prayed for his friend, friends, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And so when you're in a place of need, when you need to receive something from God, when you find it in your spirit to bless someone else, to pray for someone else, then it will happen for you. Then it will come through for you because then God knows this is not someone who just wants the hand of God. They have my heart towards my people. Your life will change when you really begin to catch this revelation. Okay, I wanna take you somewhere else. I wanna take you somewhere else. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings 17. I was actually listening to a sermon last night and um, I heard the minister read from this. And you know, we read, if you study your word, you know um, the account that I'm going to. And we've read this many times throughout scripture. And I want to relate it to what God is saying to you today. First Kings 17. Uh, let's start. Um... 
Okay, let's start at verse 8. And we'll start, we'll end at verse 12. Okay, 1 Kings 17, verse 8 through 12. Okay, listen to this. Listen to this to give you some backstory. This is about Elijah. And he is, um, he is in a pretty, what's the word, destitute place? Meaning he just got fed from ravens, right? He is taking a breather, right? He is just taking some time to himself and recouping himself. And the Lord comes to him because he also doesn't have anything, right? He needed the Lord to come help him and feed him through ravens. He needed provision as well. But then he hears a word from the Lord. He hears a word from the Lord and God says, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her, bring me a little water and a vessel that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And so he's telling her, he's giving her instructions. He's giving her instructions and it's instructions given to him by the Lord to tell her. And there's a reason for that. And she says in verse 12, as the Lord your God lives, I have not a loaf baked, but only a handful of meal in the jar and a little oil in the bottle. See, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and bake it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And there's a lot to say about that. There is. I've taught on this plenty of times. But what I want you to see in this account between this widow and Elijah is that she's now being asked by him to give, although she's in a place of need. She's being asked by him to bless him, although she is in a place where she needs something from the Lord. What's happening here? God is wanting to make an impartation to her, and it happens by way of her first giving. I'm, I'm telling you, I want you to catch this, and I it's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. I just heard that many people won't. Many people won't, but for those of you who do, you will, receive, you will receive what you've been praying for. You will receive what you have been praying for. I want you to know that there are times where God will call you to bless someone in the middle of your mess and you must obey. And I've done it many times. I've done it many times and, I, and, and it's not easy. It is not easy. I've done it many times. I have emptied my account many times to give to someone on the street. I have emptied my account many times to give to a minister and I heard God say, give it. I've done it. I've given my last many times. And do you know that is why God continues to multiply me today? That is why God continues to bless me in the way that he has today. And so it will be the same for you. And it will be the same for you, those who are able to receive, those who are obedient and you obey. So that is, that is all that I have for you today. And it's all the Lord has for you today. I want you to take from those two accounts between Job and Elijah and the widow woman giving to Elijah, Job praying for his, for his friends, that they both found it in their heart. And it was difficult, I'm sure it was, to bless others in their midst of need, to bless others in their midst of need. And then God broke through for them. I'm talking about incredible, Job received double. The, his captivity turned when he prayed for his friends. She received her miracle, that widow woman, when she blessed Elijah. Okay, so I wanna pray for you because I believe that the Lord has spoken to many of you today. And I believe that's all that he called me to share. God, you're so good to all of us. I know that you have brought the right people to this word, Lord. The people who you have heard their prayer. You have heard the silent desire of their heart. You have listened to their thoughts, God, and now you've come with an answer. You have come with an answer, God. I thank you that you are on time. I thank you that you always come with a right now word, a right now answer to their prayers. God, you're so good. You're so faithful, Lord. I know that there are many people here who received all that you have said today. And I also know, Lord, there are many people here who are skeptical of your word. They don't receive into, into that, God, for those people. I ask that you open up their heart, open up their mind so that they may receive 
that which your word says, God. I thank you that you have a spirit, Lord, that moves, that moves among your people, that penetrates the hearts of man. Let that be the case for everyone here, especially those who doubt the word of the Lord. Increase their faith. Increase the faith of everyone here so that they may receive, because it's only through faith that we can please you, God. It is only through faith that you were well pleased with us, God. And so increase the faith of everyone here. I thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and the honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. I look forward to your testimony. Um, you can send in a prayer request, those of you who would like us to pray for you. Um, it won't come up on the screen because this isn't uh, our usual equipment or setup. But if you go to the description and you click on the contact link, uh, it will take you to a page where you can send in a prayer request, you can send in your testimony or an inquiry. And I look forward to seeing it. I look forward to praying for you. I look forward to celebrating with you when you send in your testimony. For everyone here who the Lord is calling to put seed in the ground, I encourage you to obey. The link is below. There are many different options to do so. It'll take you to a page where um, you can choose what works for you. And I just say, do what God tells you to do. Do what God tells you to do. There's so much I can say about that. So much I can say about that, but I'll just leave you with that. All right, so I'll look forward to your testimony. I'll be praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message.